Ayana, you take it to another continent. I mean, so much of your work um, interacts so intimately. You kind of step out to look back in with a... Could, because people are always confused, like, where's this all coming from? And how does it... <laughs> it's like, it's a kind of symphony of, 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 of culture, but it's not cultures that are so familiar. After reading an essay about these young Japanese people, that were so enamored with hip hop that they not only donned the clothes but they darkened their skin. And that was the thing that got me was the, the skin change. It wasn't so much that hip hop had been exported and that young kids were all into it. It was just the fact that they changed their skin. So that sort of jettisoned me back to blackface and the history that we have here in the United States with that and how it ended up in Japan in the first place through Commodore Perry. But the earlier um, connection was through my mom who um, died in 1995 and that's the whole reason that I ended up in art school she was very encouraging of me to do that and she took me when I was in elementary school to see the Bunraku which is a Japanese puppet theater and then later on when I was in junior high she took me to see the Kabuki twice and both of these art forms just did a number on me as a, as a young child and I never forgot those experiences and so for me, it's, it's twofold. There's this sort of social issue with changing one's skin and performance and theater of these young black, of these young, excuse me, Japanese children. And then this other theater that I was immediately taken with when I was a very young child. So it has two, two levels for me. It's, it's a social level and then a very personal level because of my mom.